Hello. Today I am going to narrate another real life story. The story of a little girl who had to face a hell of adversities but still went on to become one of the most admired people on earth just because she was a true believer in herself and she was possessed by an indomitable spirit. If you are not well conversant with the term indomitable spirit and if you can't figure out exactly the mindset of a person who is driven by an indomitable spirit, this story will make it clear to you. There is a book titled Indomitable Spirit written by the great Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam. Unfortunately, I can't recollect much of the contents of that book which I read probably some 17-18 years back. But I know what an indomitable spirit is. And I can explain how a person who is controlled by his indomitable spirit feels about himself internally. One who is driven by an indomitable spirit would demonstrate many traits which are generally obvious in their behavior. First one and maybe the most important one is their self-belief. They are strong believers in themselves. They are driven by their conviction that they can do whatever they want to achieve in life. They hold tremendous trust in their strengths, abilities and talents. So, they are extremely confident. Second, they hold a strong belief that they are unconquerable. They are true warriors and they love to face challenges. So, they are courageous. Third, they never give up until they succeed. So, they are persistent. Fourth, they never accept defeat or admit that they have been defeated. In fact, the word defeat is not in their dictionary. They perceive their failures as just slips and they are keen to learn from such experiences. You throw them to the ground 100 times, they will get up 101 times. So, they are resilient. Fifth, they are self-motivated and therefore they do not look for any external motivation. They are made tough internally and remain spirited, particularly when adversities are around. They are self-driven individuals and are enthusiastic about their future. If you are still mystified with the terminology of indomitable spirit, you will be absolutely clear about it once you have listened to this story. And I'm sure you will be eager to share this story with others, specifically with your children. Please keep sharing. You will never know who will get benefited out of it. Okay, now let me take you through the story. Our little girl was born in a poor African-American family in the U.S., on 23rd June 1940. She was a premature child and weighed just 2 kilos. She was the 20th of 22 children from her father's two marriages. She was too weak and frail and therefore drew all sort of illnesses in her childhood. At the age of 4, she had measles, mumps, pneumonia and scarlet fever. Hardly any child survived such a deadly combination. But that was not the end of her misery. She also suffered from a polio attack that twisted and paralyzed her left leg. Doctors said she would not survive. But she survived. Since her left leg had gone useless, she had to wear an iron leg brace. Her mother took her to many doctors, but everyone had only one opinion to offer. She would never walk again. Our little girl obviously was too sad, but her mother consoled her and told her not to believe those doctors. She told the little girl that her destiny was in her hands and she could do whatever she wanted to do with her life. Since there was no good medical facility available close by, her mother took her to a medical college that was 80 kilometers away. For two years, 
they made weekly bus trip to the hospital with a hope to regain the strength of her weakened leg during this period our little girl was heartbroken but her mother told her repeatedly almost like a daily ritual that she could build her life the way she wanted and all that she had to do was to have faith persistence and courage these encouraging words of her mother had gone deep into her and started anchoring in her subconscious slowly and steadily since the medical support was of not much help her mother often removed her leg brace and massaged her impaired leg she also got support from her elder siblings they took turns to massage her useless leg at the age of 6 the little girl began to hop on one leg when she was 8 she could move around on two legs by wearing the leg brace at 9 she removed the leg brace and tried her limping steps slowly she developed confidence at the age of 11 one day her mother discovered her playing basketball with other children that was a turning point her mother encouraged her and advised her to try other sports also in the next couple of years she developed a rhythmic stride which according to the doctors was a medical wonder her persistence started paying off at age 12 she entered a race in her school she ran dragging her left leg and finished last far far behind the second last but she didn't quit she entered every race in high school and she came in the last in every race her teachers asked her to quit her friends begged her to quit but she refused to quit because she was driven by her own inner call and one day she finished the race second last that was success for her her self belief soared new heights and soon came a day to everyone's surprise when she won a race that was it after that she never lost a race she always came first in every race that she entered by that time she was possessed by her indomitable spirit and that offered her new wings to fly at the same time she also flourished on basketball court at the age of 14 she became the star performer of her school basketball team and went to participate in the state basketball championship there she was noticed by a coach named Ed Temple he got surprised seeing her pace of running on the basketball court the coach also recognized something in her that was invisible to others her indomitable spirit so coach temple invited our 14 year old girl to join his summer training program after attending the summer camp she won all nine events she entered subsequently coach temple trained her so well that at the age of 16 she represented the us at the 1956 summer olympics in melbourne and she earned a bronze medal in the 4 into 100 meter relay but she was not satisfied with that because by that time she had already developed a notion an incredible notion that one day she would be the world's fastest woman runner so she was hungry for more in 1960 at the age of 20 she went to the olympic games again this time in rome her resolve was so strong this time and her indomitable spirit was flying so high she felt herself unstoppable but there was a big challenge waiting for her that challenge was a german athlete named yutta heine yutta was the greatest woman runner of those days and nobody had ever beaten yutta but in the 100 meter dash our girl defeated yutta and won gold with 11.2 second timing it was a world record and thus she became the fastest woman on earth she beat yuta again in the 200 meter final and she had already set a new world record for 200 meter in the heats with a timing of 22.9 seconds 
So she had earned two Olympic gold medals and she set two new world records. Then came the last challenge, four into 100 meter relay. She had to run the last leg of the relay against Yuta again. The first two runners of her team made perfect handoffs with the baton. When the third runner handed the baton to our girl, she was so excited that she dropped it. And she could see from corner of her eye, Yuta taking off and surpassing her like an arrow shot from a bow. The viewers in the gallery were shocked. They knew it was impossible for anyone to pick up the baton from the ground and catch Yuta. But our girl just did that. Clocked at 44.3 seconds, it was another world record. And she had earned her third Olympic gold medal. That day, she made history as she became the first woman ever to win three gold medals in the same Olympic Games. And all the three world records set by her remained unbeaten for several years. Her name was Wilma Rudolph and the doctors had said she would never walk again. Wilma said later, my doctors told me I would never walk again. My mother told me I would. I believed my mother. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon with another inspiring story. Till then, bye-bye.